Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. So I'm coming to you with my review on the Morphe uh, by James Charles palette. So logistics, let's get logistics out of the way. So first off, who is James Charles? If you don't know, James Charles is a beauty YouTuber. Um, he got famous a couple years ago. Um, <clears throat> he was the first male cover girl spokesperson. He's only like 19, by the way. Um... He has about 10 million subscribers on YouTube, 10 million followers on Instagram. He's a beautiful, beautiful face. Uh, and yeah, and he has a collaboration with Morphe. Make sure you check him out. Uh, I like Morphe palettes, so definitely I'm excited when a new Morphe release comes out. Um, and I always think it's cool and just inspiring when a beauty YouTuber can collab with these big brands. I always just, I don't know. I always just think it's cool. No matter the outcome of what the product is, the fact that a brand reaches out to a YouTuber, just, I don't know. That's pretty cool to me. Anyway, so Morphe and James Charles created this palette. Um, this is called the Artistry Palette. Um, the packaging was really pretty. I actually don't even have the box. Um, yeah, this palette released mid-November. I got mine the day it released. For some reason, I don't know why, I don't actually follow James Charles. Like, I'm not even a subscriber of his. I've seen his videos and different things. I'm just not a subscriber. Um, but for some reason, I just thought this pal, I just knew it was going to sell out. I don't know. Morphe collabs usually do, like Jaclyn Hill and different things, but I thought this one was going to be like people were lined about the door. But anyway, needless to say, the day that it released, I was going to work around the same time Ulta opened, and I passed Ulta going to work, and I was like, let me stop in and see. I didn't know if they were going to be in stores, actually. I knew they were releasing at Ulta on that day. I thought it was just like online, so I call. They, I, I'm, I call. It's like 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, do you have that palette? Because I knew I wanted to get it anyway. And they were like, yeah, we have it in stock. And I was like, oh, okay. So I went and picked it up that day. Since that day, it's been the only palette I've been using. Um, it, it released mid-November, so that was around the time people were gearing up for the holidays, gearing up for Thanksgiving. So I had a lot of places to wear this. My best friend's baby shower, Thanksgiving, Black Friday, um, the days in between, going to work. Like, it was just, it was the only palette I had with me. Um, and I traveled to my family, and so, yeah, I packed this one. And so I have, like I said, I have my opinion about it, um, because it's been the only one I've been using. So, this palette retails for $39. You can get it on the Morphe website, you can get it on the Ulta website, you can get it in stores at Ulta. They are restocking. I'm not sure if it's a limited edition. I don't know if it's like a Jaclyn Hill situation where it will always be available. I'm not quite sure. Uh, $39. And anything else? Um, this is what it looks like. It comes in this black packaging with his name, with his signature um, on it. It's not like embossed or anything, just like labeled on there. Uh, really big, let me show you, just so you get an idea. Oh, come on, come on. This is a standard size, like Morphe palette. Um, and the difference in this palette and the other Morphe palettes, before I open it up, the standard, like, 35 Morphe palettes are in this plastic packaging with this snap closed, uh... What is this? What is this? It's snap clothes, lid, or whatever. Whatever. Um, the James Charles one is in the cardboard packaging. So it's a similar packaging to like how the Balm or Lorac might package their palettes. Which I actually like this a little bit better. Um, the only reason, only way I like, like these is if they come with a mirror. Morphe palettes don't come with a mirror, so I don't mind if all of their palettes were in this cardboard style just, you know, fold over. It's a magnetic closure, definitely, type of palette. I don't mind that. Kind of like the Jaclyn Hill palette, which I finally purchased this. Um, I went to Black Friday shopping at Ulta, and I needed to spend, I wanted to spend my points, and I was looking for things to spend them, and I was like, well, you know what? I'm finally going to go ahead and just get the Jaclyn Hill one to see. Didn't have to spend my money. I spent like $3 total at Ulta for almost $200 worth of stuff. So whatever, moving on. Anyway, it's kind of like, like that. I always got to share when I get a deal. But anyway, um, it's this black, sleek, matte, easy to wipe clean packaging. Okay? Again, $39. Let's go ahead and get into the palette. And so what the palette is, is if you guys have the 39A, which I never bought, um, it's, sit it's situated like this with, I tape, it comes with a plastic sheet with the names, I tape them to the top um, so I can keep that. But anyway, uh... 
you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times four is 32. 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39 shades, like the 39A. Just wanted to verify that. You get, uh, again, you get 39 shades in here with the center row of the center seven being larger. So the, the smaller ones are 26 millimeter standard size eyeshadows, uh, and the middle row is probably like a 36 millimeter, a larger panned eyeshadow, kind of like a Juvia's Place size or a Suva Beauty size eyeshadow, just so you get some comparison. And when I was uh, listening to this palette, hearing James Charles release it and things, these middle shades would be like the most commonly used shades, which I can agree with for some of them, but it also ultimately depends on you. So this palette consists of a uh, combination of matte shades along with satins, metallics, uh, shimmers. Most of them are matte though. Uh, you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26 out of the 39 shades are matte. Uh, I don't mind that. When it comes to bright, colorful palettes, I prefer most of them to be matte because working with a matte, bright, colorful shade is a lot easier than a bright matte, I mean a bright metallic or whatever color. So it doesn't, it doesn't just in case you want to know, it doesn't matter to me that they're all matte. You do get your row of neutrals that multiple, that that most used row, I'm not saying that, he's saying that, uh, that most used row, they are, um, you have neutrals in there and you have some neutrals kind of scattered about. But when you look at this palette, obviously that selling point is those bright, colorful shades. Now, one thing I do like about this palette, I'll start with, once I finish the logistics, I'll go with the likes and dislikes as I always do in my reviews. Um, again, 39 shades, you get a good mixture of rainbow colors. You get red, orange, yellow, blue, green, purple, that's the Rogi Biv. You do get that. There's not any, when it comes to like the rainbow and bright colors, there's not many, when you off the top of your head, when you think of a rainbow palette, there's not many that's missing, if you will. Like, where's the orange? Or where's the purple? They're there. Um, with that, you only get one yellow, yet you get two different kinds of greens and two different oranges and three different purples and three different blues. So there is an imbalance with the colors, the way they're spread out, but... You know, I'm just I'm just letting you know. Uh, you do get a bright white, which is kind of rare now in eyeshadow palettes. You'll get a light champagne or a light nude or this type of shade, a light tan, but you rarely get a white. And this white is one of the bigger pans, which I think leans more toward the artistry side. Because if you look on James Charles Instagram and his YouTube, the looks that he is creating are very artistic, very, um, I don't want to say editorial, but very almost like face painty not then he's not using face paint but like they're they're artistic looks you know with things dripping and this and that and so it's that white will come in handy to actually set things and to again use for shadows and different things but that he put a big pan in there i think that attests to how people can use this palette uh so <clears throat> i think that's all the logistics that i want to say all right so the Likes and dislikes. Let's go ahead. So what I like about this palette, I'll tell you right now, the quality of these shades, I haven't really found any like, oh my god, this is horrible. They remind me of Morphe's later palette. So when I say later, I'm talking about the 35O. I'm talking about um, the 25s, the new formulated 25s, uh, the Jaclyn Hill um, Vault ones, the, the two of my favorite ones, the quality of those. Uh, I don't think these these shades are like anything revolutionary for Morphe. Uh, they are consistent with Morphe new um, Morphe's newer formulations. Uh, is that is that what I want? That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, formulations. So they have pigment to them. Let me go ahead and swatch some, and I'm going to insert. Um, I'm going to insert a picture of swatches or a couple pictures of swatches right now. Okay, and as you can see, they have pigment to them. Here's a couple. The mattes are really, um, the mattes are pigmented. They blend well. I don't really have issues with blending the mattes with Morphe um, overall. Like I said, some of the mattes can be a little bit 
chalky. I said like I said. I don't know if I said it already, but some of the masks can be a little bit chalky. I'm not experiencing that with too many of them here in this palette, okay? I will, I do appreciate that. I think if anything has been bumped up, it might be the formulation of the mattes in this palette. But again, they're still not revolutionary. They're just consistent with the, with the best mattes that Morphe offers. Uh, the metallic shades are really nice. Let me show you this purple here. I really like that purple. Uh, piece of hair. Ew, it's gross. Uh, <laughs> uh, this one actually leans a little bit more pinky lavender. It shifts in the light, which is really pretty. That is the shade Artistry. Uh, the green. Let's go ahead with that one. That one doesn't shift. It's just green, but it's really pretty. That's the shade Guac. Um, but anyway, those are really nice. Now, the lighter satin ones have been a little patchy for me, specifically these two. Uh, let me give you the names. Let me swatch as I go. Uh, Literally and Sister. These two here, applying them with a brush on my... I can lead a little bit more toward being patchy where I have to build them up a little bit. Once I build them up, sorry for the wipes. Once I build them up, they're fine. But just to give you that, uh, as well as where's the other one that does that for me? Uh, Ring Light, which is another one of the lighter um, champagne shades. So that's something that you might want to think about. Uh, I said I was going to talk about the Dislex last, but whatever. We're going back and forth. Uh, <laughs> I really enjoy the idea of a large row of most used. Would these be my most used? Like I said, to an extent. One, two, and three. <clears throat> Excuse me. These warm browns. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Yes. <laughs> um... If you are the craze of warm palettes and ev everyone I feel like starts their look with a warm brown in the crease these days. So I can appreciate that. And that's definitely on trend and it's definitely a good move. As far as the lighter shades, the champagne and the white, not really for me. Um, or even that light, this light pale yellow, not really for me, but I do get it. I do understand. The black can be hit and miss. If you're a smoky person, if you're a deep eyeshadow person, you will appreciate a big pan of black. All of my palettes have a matte black in them these days, so I'm never going to use up a black, but I can't understand the insert of these shades. I think overall that was a good choice to make those specific shades the big pans and only having and having them mostly be matte. Only one is not matte, and I appreciate that because you're going to use up a matte shade more, in my opinion, because you're using it for the crease to blend out different things, to do whatever, than you are a shimmery or metallic shade, so... I do appreciate that. Um, like I said, I appreciate the colors of the rainbow. I appreciate the neon added to that with that orange, the pink, and the green and yellow. I do appreciate that. I think the colors created, the colors selected for this palette are really nice and really well done. I think um, the colors selected are really well done. And I this is what appealed to me, like this bright, colorful, Yes, it really appealed to me. Uh, Morphe's 35B. I actually gave away my 35B um, because I just stopped using it after a while. You know, just accumulating all these palettes and like, you know how things get forgotten. I gave it to my friend who really, really wanted it and it was discontinued. So I gave it to her. And this one now kind of replaces my 35B. So I really do um, appreciate that. Now, let's get on to a little bit of the negatives here. The first thing is, and it's not a negative to me, but I always mention it. It doesn't have a mirror. This is a huge palette. Um, this is something that more than likely, if you're traveling with it, it's the only thing you're traveling with. I realize that if this added a mirror, it might be really huge, but I'm just letting you know. Also, I have to mention it, as I mentioned, the shade names are not printed on the palette. Um, some of Morphe's palettes, the smaller Jaclyn Hill bolts, managed to print the shade names on the palette. I don't know how they do that at Morphe. I don't know how they decide that, and I don't know how much it costs to do that. This is one of their nine pan palettes. The shade names are printed. So I don't know why they're inconsistent with certain palettes. I don't know what palette determines if the names are printed or not. I just would appreciate if the names were printed from a, from a, YouTuber standpoint. I realize the average person does not necessarily need the names printed because what would you need to know the names for? But that's just something that I I, I, I would like. <laughs> okay, I also mentioned the uh, little bit of patchiness with a few of those shades. Oh, excuse me. 
You know, you feel like you got a burp or sneeze and it's and it's not coming. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the next thing that I want to mention with it is, I, I almost didn't want to touch on it, but I have to. Um, the idea that you have to use palettes a certain way, um, a lot of that's been going on with this palette. I use this palette with eyeshadow primer like I always do. Urban De I'm wearing the palette today. Um, I purposely didn't do like a rainbow look um, because I wanted to show you, you can get... You can get some other things out of this and don't have to think about just rainbow. But um, you have to use it a certain way. I use it with eyeshadow primer, Urban Decay Primer Potion, the same eyeshadow primer I use with everything. And that's how I'm testing it because that's how I use it every day. I don't feel as though you should have to, if a palette has to come with specific instructions, number one, I'm, I'm flashing back to ABA, um, ABH subculture is that the one uh if you have to if it comes with a specific way to use it or you need to use it this way number one you need to put instructions in there you need to let people know that's how it needs to be used okay number two if it's that complicated i kind of don't want it so it was like it's one of those situations when these reviews came out uh it was they were being told that they weren't using it correctly <laughs> and things like that you know suggestions of like a mac paint pot first off a MAC Paint Pot is not an eyeshadow primer. It's a cream eyeshadow. So you're telling me I need to use another eyeshadow with this palette. If that's the case, you should have provided one with it or a specific primer that you want it to, to be if you have to use a specific one. Again, with this palette, I haven't had these issues enough to say like it's it's crap or whatever. I use my, my regular eyeshadow primer and was satisfied with all my looks, but if it didn't work for you, it should not be your fault of like using the wrong primer or whatever because that's that's ridiculous, it's absolutely ridiculous. Overall, I'm giving this palette a B minus. Um, it's not again the color selection is wonderful. I think James choosing these these shades to be a rainbow plus some neutrals thrown. I think it is wonderful. I think the color selection, even the finishes on the certain shades are absolutely great. It's wonderful and he did a great job choosing those. Even the center row of what would be ever most used. I really respect that and I think he did a great job. I really do. Um, again, but it's nothing revolutionary. It, 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 the quality of them is not horrible. I actually think the quality is a little bit step up from the Jaclyn Hill Vault. Um, but again, it could just be the colors that he chose. I don't know. Um, but again, the, this quality is just the best of Morphe. I wouldn't say it's the best quality of eyeshadows overall in the world. Uh, but it's definitely not something that I would throw in the chest. So it's definitely not something that I say you wouldn't check out. If you like bright palettes, large palettes with options, I would definitely recommend this for $39.00. Also, if you get it from Ulta, you can use your coupons. You can use you can use your points. So this is one of those palettes that has been provided at a reasonable price. I think thirty nine dollars is reasonable for thirty nine shadows um, in a palette. You know the price point. I think it's nice. I think yeah, I I I I do recommend it. I give it a B minus. Again, it's nothing revolutionary, but it's also nothing horrible either. It the the number one factor for me is this color selection and having these multitude of colors and the neutrals in there. I just I love it. I really do. Um, and congratulations and great job to James for that. Uh, anything else I have to say? I don't think so. I'm wearing the palette today. I am wearing, oh my gosh, some, these purple, wait, pink, purple, uh, in the crease area. Uh, what else I got? I got on the lid, I have literally and so good. So the peachy and the gold on the lid blended around and then the lower lash line, I have the green, I have a green eyeliner on and then I put this, smudge this green underneath. Uh, <clears throat> My favorite shades in this palette, my favorite shade actually is this blue. Why? I don't know. But this is my blue that I have been wearing um, every, almost every look that I have done. No matter what was on the top of my lids, I was using a blue liner. Um, I was using my Ruby Kisses. I love this liner. Um, Ruby Kisses liner in the shade Pastel Blue. I've been putting that in my waterline because I love it. And I've been smudging it with that blue there. That blue is called Playground. I have been using that blue there, and oh my gosh, it's just wonderful. That's my favorite shade. I don't know why, but I've really been loving that blue. And so today I was like, I gotta switch it up. Let me do some green. Let me do some green. I'll switch it up. 
Uh, but overall, great job, James. Um, I hope Morphe comes out with more of this size of palette. I am a sucker for a large palette. I know everyone's not. Um, but great job, James. And yeah, if you have any questions, comments, concerns about this palette, please feel free to leave them down below. I love you all, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye!